Alrighty folks, uh, Paul and I, uh, my brother, he's going to help me today with a video. Um, he actually had an idea to film a video of us making a rack of elk ribs. Um, we've done this, I think twice before. I've done it once myself and then Paul helped me last time. And we couldn't really find any videos or like articles on Google hardly on how to make elk ribs. So we figured we'd make a video and show how we did it. Um, last time we thought they turned out pretty good, but there was... Uh, a couple things we think we could do better to make them even better this time around. So I have another rack of elk ribs and we're going to give them a try today. Uh, what you're going to need to make them how we're going to try to make them is a grill, um, like a dry rub, obviously elk ribs, tin foil, like big sheets of tin foil, and something to spritz the meat with um, intermittently. So that's really about all you need. And as far as time to cook, it's gonna take us somewhere between three to probably around four hours um, to finish uh, the ribs once they hit the grill. So let's get to it. And we're gonna get the meat going. The Charbroil uh, Signature True Infrared Grill. Um, we just filled up with propane for the three to four hour cook. Um, we're starting off by heating it all the way up to make sure the uh, gas is flowing appropriately and then we're going to back it up and see if we can set it down to about 200 to 250 degrees for uh, cooking these ribs low and slow. Alright, so here's the underside of the ribs. Um, so this would be inside the diaphragm. And the way I got these out on the actual animal was with a Sawzall and it worked really, really well. So. Um, if you're wondering the best way to actually cut the ribs out of the elk or deer or what have you, um, a sawzall worked really well. Um, going this way and then a knife works just fine going this way. Alright, so one of the most important steps, uh, not just with elk ribs but any ribs, is to remove the membrane on the interior, the inside of the rib, like Jane said on the uh, diaphragm side of the ribs. Um, it's very uh, viscous, very tough. You want to make sure to remove this prior to cooking and prior to eating. Um, what I found that works pretty well, um, I don't think it's a secret, is to use paper towel to help kind of peel it back. Grabs it pretty well. And then you want to try to peel off as much as you can. This does take a little bit of time. You can't really grab it all in once, but work on getting that all removed before we season and put it on the grill. Alrighty guys, so um, I'm using this applewood rub um, and because it's ribs, we're going to season the outside pretty, pretty thick, not, you know, kind of, kind of like you would a roast, um, not like a steak where it's like pretty light seasoning. We're going to rub this guy pretty good before it hits the grill and uh, then once it's on the grill, we're gonna spritz it about every 30 minutes with some sort of like acidic um, fluid. So um, like lemon juice or apple juice or something along those lines. Um, but yeah, we're gonna season both sides pretty good and get her on the grill. Okay, so uh, we got the, the meat rubbed. We got it prepped to go on the grill. Um, the grill is sitting a little higher than we want, um, but it's about 275. Um, and we're hoping that'll drop a bit more once the meat's in there to about that 250 range. So we're going to put the rib side down for the first couple of hours. We got them on there. So they look pretty good and uh, we're going to go, we're going to go hit the links in golf and every half hour or so we're going to pop back by. Paul lives right on the course and uh, we're going to spritz it every half hour um, for about two hours and then we'll wrap it in tin foil and, and show you guys the next step. So that's what we got going. Okay so we're about half hour mark in. Um, we're looking to do our first uh, spritzing. Um, you can use apple juice. Uh, in our case we only have soda um, so we're going to go on the Dr. Pepper route. We used it before. Works Doc okay. Dr. Thunder. Dr. Thunder. That's right. Even cheaper. Well um also we're checking in on our temp it's finally come down it's about 220. um with this grill we're noticing it's kind of hard to keep it that low we have only have one burner on at low out of two what we're going to do is switch burners to the right side 
and we're gonna turn off the left after I spritz it um, to even out where the heat's coming from. So I'm gonna go ahead. You can see it's already browning up pretty nice. So what's the what's the purpose of the spritzing? So the spritzing is just to kind of help keep it keep it moist, keep adding moisture throughout. Um, when it's open like this and not wrapped in foil, it's losing a lot of moisture as you go. So this is kind of adding moisture back in as as we cook. And then would this be better on a smoker potentially? Yeah. If you if you have a smoker, you have uh, access to one. Um, you can add a bunch of uh, flavor depending on what type of wood chips or pellets you're using. Um, unfortunately, we only have a grill in this situation, but we're going to do our best. Alrighty, so we parked the rig and Paul's going to do our next half hour spritz. Time for the second. Ooh. Looks delicious, dude. New Mexico bull elk right there. Mm -mm. Let's get back on the course. Shut it down. All right, guys, the temp is really getting to that sweet spot that we want. We're at about 245 right now, which is freaking perfect. My alarm on my phone just went out. So we came back and we're gonna spritz the meat for the third time. Um, and we're gonna do it a total of four times. So we have one more to go. Meat's looking really good. Really, really good. Um, so yeah, again, we're just trying to get as much moisture as we can into the meat because it is going to lose moisture in here. And then once we're done with the next spritz, which will be spritz number four, uh, we're going to wrap it the best we possibly can in tin foil um, to keep all the moisture in. So that's what it is. I don't think we're going to switch. Should I switch the burgers? Might as well. Okay, so we're gonna switch the burgers. Got it spritzed well. So this one we got a low, this one we got off. So we're gonna go this one to low. This one off. Maybe just give her a little more. And uh, yeah, we'll be back in 30 minutes. And at that point we'll pull the meat and uh, get it wrapped in foil and, and uh, get it on for, we'll let you know how much time, but a longer period of time. So it's going well, let's get back on the course. So we're at two hours in, our temp's sitting nice, right between 200 and 250, right about 225. Um, we'll put both on low right now as we open it. Ooh. All right. Dude, smells so muddy. It's smelling good. So this is the time that we are going to wrap it. Let me see it, let me That's see That's the it. bottom side. So good, dude. All right, let's wrap it up. Okay, so the trick on this next part is to make sure you wrap it nice and tight. So, and also you want to put the meat side down. Meat side down, the interior or the diaphragm side up. And then here's the real trick. You want to make sure to seal this guy in as best you can. Uh, last time, last time that we cooked, it was leaking out a little bit and it let a lot of the moisture out. It was good, but that's why we think we can do better on this this time around. So the golf glove is uh, highly recommended. Yes. I feel like we have a lot better seal this time compared to our last time. So hopefully that keeps a lot more moisture in and it's really juicy when we get to eat this guy. How long are we going to put it on? Um, okay, so we went a little long on the first uh, two hours while we're out having fun golfing. Um, so we're going to do an hour to an hour and a half on this guy depending on how our play goes all right does that feel pretty sealed to you yeah that's awesome man let's uh let's put her on there eh all right. set a timer for an hour and a half
All right, so we're about three hours and 20 minutes in. I'm gonna put my uh, golf glove hand into another glove. We're gonna pull this, maybe. We need a bigger grill. Oh, shut this bad boy down. All right, our last temp registered at uh, just over 200. It was about 220 before I opened the lid, so. We're gonna pull it off and we'll cut into it in a little bit. All right, so we got the meat in. Uh, we let it rest a little bit, uh, still covered. So we're gonna uncover it now. Oh yeah, see all the uh, bones protruding from the meat. Music's done. All right, we're gonna pull it. Flip it over. And we're gonna flip it. Oh yeah. We're gonna cut this part and have ourselves a bit of a meal. Thanks for joining us. It's been good. Paul and I finished off the elk ribs and they turned out pretty good. Um, I'd say unfortunately about the same as they did the first time. So they were good, but I think we could still do better. Um, so a couple things that we learned from our second try that I wanted to pass on in this video is to be sure you really get a lot of that like um, fascia or that silver stuff on top of the meat. Make sure you do a really good job before you grill or smoke to get that stuff off the best that you can. It's tricky, but I think that's a really important step and we did it. I just think we could have done it better and we would have had a better result. Um, secondly, we put the meat on for about three and a half hours and we both agree that uh, more like 2.45 to 3 would probably be a better range or maybe two and a half to three uh, would be a better range time-wise. So anyways, we hope this video was valuable. Um, like I said, we couldn't really find much information on how to make elk ribs when we were looking. So hopefully this video uh, helps whoever wants to try it. And if you have made elk ribs and they turned out really bitching, leave a comment and let us know what you did. And that way people can also read the comments and get some information there. So thank you guys so much. Like and subscribe. Head to bowdisciples.com for some merch. And we'll see you guys in the next video.